very interesting pick coming through. Obviously, we've seen Order play this a lot, but I mean, you just think back to that game we were casting versus Downfall. It didn't look too good from them, did it? It didn't look fantastic, that's for sure. And against Renegade, you need to bring fantastic. That's the uh, the scary part. So from what we're seeing now, we're already into this pistol with Renegades taking the CT side now too. So Order are going to need to be very concentrated in the way that they approach this, but they're going for a very passive start and look for them to explode into this round. They're, all, of course, coming in with smokes and Molotovs as well. So this A hit looks like a very real prospect, but they do have the option to fake here and head themselves back towards B. And we know Renegades are solid when it comes to the T side on this map as well. So Order really need to get off to a good start. Remember, they 13-2 Chiefs and then closed it out 16-4. The runaway by Sicko as he spots a couple of players, but Hats is sneaky. They're cautious of this. There's already two players, three in fact, staring at him as they molly him out. And there's no escape for Hats. He is taken out right away as Order look to take A. They've smoked it off and they'll get right up there for the bomb plant. This could be a risky play. Sicko up on top. He exposed himself to a couple of players, but luckily walks away with his life. Not so lucky, though, is Malta, who gets dropped down going for a flank. And it's into a 5v3. A great start to the pistol by order. And now just need to hold on for another 20 seconds. Well, they've got control of this A ramp too now, so this is really scary. And they're just holding off. Oh, that position again, you still have utilized it so many times, but they're all going to stand and peek Dexter at the same time. That is the best way to approach a USP. And... They take the pistol round convincingly. They were very passive in the beginning. Didn't really have the utility to take control of A ramp early on. And it was just this slow, strong aggression towards A. that Renegades, because they were playing something passive, really couldn't uh, deal with. They had hats in the bait position there at Sandbags, but he was dealt with. And they had a molly ready for it. They were going to flush him out. And from there, it was just easy pickings. They were very well set up in that post plan. Yeah, everything that Renegades tried, the sneaky play over towards the sandbags, the flank from Malta, Order had a read on it. They knew what was going down, and they've countered it perfectly. You can see they've done their homework in that round alone, that they're dialed in and ready to go here. Opening this round up with a bit of a force buy up, Renegades have gone through straight away, a shot onto Ali to leave him on 30 health from the scout. Now mid control is going to be sought after by Order. They've got three players ready to swing, Actually, no flash going to come around this corner. I noticed the player in the back, Ustilo, only has a smoke. So they're going to dry peek into the Deagles. That's a risky play, Jim. It seems to work out as they at least find the opening and then retreat slowly backwards, luckily evading the nade that was about to come through. Yeah, order very well set up with uh, the exception of Rick, who we've seen lurk quite some time. Everybody else is just paired up. So they're making sure that they've got the option to trade should they be pushed, but... You can see Renegades at the moment. They're set up very passively here. Zico's done some damage already with that scout. And we'll be looking to do more, but he's going to have to really rely on Dexter here to be his safety net because there's a big peak incoming. And they're just going to spur themselves into this as they get themselves up the A ramp, grouped up, taking control. They haven't really sent anybody through scaffold just yet, but commitment to this A bomb site will ensue. I don't know how this is going to go for Malta. He's dropped a smoke down, so I think they know that he's here. They'll come through pre-firing and take him down. An order. 15 seconds. They've got to get going. Ince tries to deny the bomb plant, but only catches Ali. And with his steel low closing it out on the double, that will be a nice little 2-0 for order. They don't lose too much in that round. It's an acceptable loss. I believe they lost an MP5. So definitely something that uh, you, you would rather have in this round, where obviously you can farm up a little bit of extra cash, but it could have went a whole lot worse for them. All in all, you know, when they break out into the control for this round and come up the ramp, it definitely did look scary. But the fact that they're being so cautious of all these angles and leaving no players unchecked, even on the boost up above, to potentially deny the bomb plant, that's, uh, it's the clean kind of second round that we hope for. It is, and this is just a grouped push coming out. And Molotov means that there is no action to be seen just yet for Jira. He's going to actually re-aggress because Ustilo was stepped on. And this... It's not too bad, actually, from Renegades early on in the piece. They have collected that AK in the capable hands of Sicko. They have given control up of this A bomb site for the moment, but they're still very wary of this B bomb site. Rick's still on the lurk, and he actually takes down Sicko too. So the AK is going to be retrieved, thankfully. Inns, this could get dangerous. He's a sharpshooter in, the, in his day. And Malta on the flank can't get anything done, so... He does do some damage to 
Jira, but Inns and Dexter, I think they're just going to count their blessings, take the AK, and maybe Dexter can sneak an exit frag. But all in all, not a bad round from Renegades, given very minimal inv investment. Or if you walk out of this round with an AK, if they do manage to save it, which it looks like they will, that's more than enough uh, to put a smile on your face. In terms of orders, losses as well, it's not terrible. Ali did come in with just a Deagle, so they've only lost the one rifle, really. It's a shame that it was their AK and not their Galil. But either way, one rifle lost is... Uh, not the end of the world. Ali's going to go in for the op in this round. I think that's why he took the deagle, or maybe he'll just stick on the rifle. But I presume usually when you see the op or take over just a pistol coming into round number three up against the eco, that's uh, that's what they're kind of indicating to you. But you see another AK bought up, so they are going to stick to full rifles. And T-side opping on Vertigo, Jim, it, it doesn't come through as much as on some other maps. I think it's uh, it's very situational. And you'll see a lot of... Uh, the thing that really hammered it home to me was, like, towards the start of Vertigo, even on the older versions, you saw, like, Poison was, I think, the only opera that was consistently buying, and everyone else was, like, maybe three or four of the rounds on the T side, they would have an op, and the rest, it would just be AKs. Well, the thing that makes it difficult, too, is the fact that you don't only have to move your mouse on the X-axis, but the Y-axis as well. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different angles to clear and check, so it makes T side opening very difficult. Absolutely, yeah. You'll see the CT uh, a little bit more, obviously, because you can hold from even those vertical angles and make it a little bit more varied in the angles that your opponents have to clear as you push on through. And that's why Sitko's got the op up and is going to look to do some damage with it. He's over towards the B side. And you can also obviously hold mid with this on the rotate, which is fairly handy if you do need to stack up the A site, which could be necessary for Renegades in just a moment. As you can see, Order are creeping on up that A ramp. This is a slow grouped approach we're seeing from Order, and it's getting dividends for them. But they are going to come to a head here in this A bomb site. Again, the passive hold from Renegades, very turtled up. They're not peaking the A ramp like we've seen other teams. The smokes will come in, the executes will come out. The Molotovs will also push them off the common positions, trying to hold this bomb site. So, this is a well researched approach from Order. This, though, is going to be a five versus five retake situation on the A bomb site. So, utility usage is going to be key. Wise move by Dexter not to throw the molly out immediately. He's going to hold it for the retake so they can maybe block off an angle like short. That molly actually pushes him back instead and stops them getting up on top of the red boxes. That's a really smart move. But Hats, he gets one through the smoke. This might spur them on, even with the low time. Straight through the smoke, though, into Ali. He only gets the one. But luckily, his teammates are here to answer back. Ten seconds left, and Ince is in a 1v2. He drops onto the bomb, but he drops it right afterwards. His Jira picks up a 3k. An order pick up a fourth. What is Jira eating today? He has been huge <laughs> compared to some of the other days we've seen. That being said, yesterday he got a much better performance throughout the day than earlier on in the competition. So he's gone from being effectively a Pronex style IGL to against teams like Rooster, for example. And then against more of the structured teams, he's gone into more of this fragging role and it's working. Um, we're seeing a lot of good young fragging IGLs in this region at the moment. So that's promising. Obviously, Dexter himself, fragging IGL. Apox that, fragging IGL. So the fact that Jira is now joining that ranks too, which it makes for a really interesting composition of these teams. Well, it's what we like to see. You know, the, these players swapping it up, showing us new things as well. I mean, fragging IGLs, yeah, they are so rare to come across, which makes it all the more fun to see. Now, I wonder for Renegades, when you've got these pistols in hand, these deagles, they tried the grouped up approach and got something for it. Even they walked out of that round with uh, with a rifle. But now that they've got a deagle instead of a USP, they can take some more individual fights. They can spread out that little bit more. And you'll see Dexter and Sicko holding down on short. And, oh, oh, no. Well, that's gone terribly. Sicko had actually been wallbanged at the start of the round, and they followed up onto him. And then that nade just pinpoint on Dexter's feet. Oh my goodness, are they a table at like Hurricanes or something? Because they've been fully booked in this. <laughs> they've, been, they've been totally red. And it seems like Order's done their homework coming onto this map. So this is scary. We knew Ali said that they had some things up their sleeve. They didn't want to show everything just yet. They did some, had some gimmicky things is uh, effectively the way that he put it. And 
it looks like the reads on Renegades right now are good. So we said previous history suggested this matchup on Vertigo was going to be a one-sided affair for Renegades, but Order have got themselves off to the perfect start. Maybe these are the winds of change that are starting to blow. Well, they could well be. With Order 5-0 up, we said that Renegades are solid on the T side. We saw it versus Chiefs with the 13-2 half that they had on this map. But my god, Order, they got off to the good start that they needed. Now the foundations are firmly built, and if they can win this buy round, it just keeps on getting better. They could be looking at 7-0 potentially, and at that point, they are massive favorites to close out this map. Renegades need this round, this one right here, and a pause is being called to really discuss the strategy. They know how much weight sits on this one. If you've got a coach sitting in your corner too, this is this is perfect. This is probably our biggest criticism of some of these teams is where things mm -hmm. aren't going wrong. And funnily enough, I feel like I've been harping on this forever, the teams in this region. Take tack pauses. Take them earlier on in the match. Don't back yourselves into a corner early on and not having discussed some of the problems because it's too late to change things later on in the match. And this is good from Renegades. I like this. Myth has been a real revelation for them, at least in terms of finding their mojo here. And this is a faster approach now out of the tack pause. And it just gains them some control of this A ramp. But a few tense moments there for Renegades, no doubt. They're playing much more passively earlier on in the round. Yeah, a real kick in the gut for Sicko, who is the only player that had any kind of aggression to start this one off. And he had the opportunity to take Ustilo down, but missed the shot just about. It had to be very quick and a hard one to hit. But he knows that's an opportunity now slipping out of their hands. Renegades back, sitting in the 5v5. The even battle, but Dexter quickly pulls that over in their favor. Ali getting a little bit aggressive towards short by himself. And Dexter is happy to punish that one. He's going to have to pull back, though, and play much more passive. You would imagine on 20 HP, I still see him peeking short as a lunatic. But it is smoked off, I guess. So he's just holding it up close. Although they could get around there. And a stray bullet would take him down. So I, I don't know. Keeping well, the control either way. He's going to have to rely on his teammates, too, because he doesn't have any utility to use in the rest of this round. So he's either going to have to be smoked or flashed in, depending on what he wants to do. So keep that in mind as this round plays out. With 20 HP, playing so aggressive is unusual. Oh, sicko, he's being cut off. But Dexter's good for the trade. Now the AWP recovered. That's going to help him out in future fights, but he might not get any. The opponents are moving in towards the B side, and Ince quickly shuts them down. He's got an angle to see them cross to the right. Knows that he's exposed at this point, and his teammates are on the way. Hats, no flash left. He's playing off the T's flashes at this point, trying to peek out and catch them off guard. The smoke goes down on the cross to get him back over. But as Ooh. he tries to fall back, Ustilo takes him out. The bomb dropped with a molly trade from Malta, leaving Valiants in a 1v3. We've seen this guy win them before. But the spray wasn't good. And Malta closes the first round out for Renegades. Yeah, time really was against Order 2. That was the uh, crucial point. They weren't even in the bomb site yet, and there was 15 seconds left on the clock. So uh, even though Valiants... As good a player as he is, I don't think Renegades were all going to peek him and give him five seconds to one versus three. They were going to just play that one a little bit more safely. However, Order finally have found that B-bomb site. They haven't had to go there just yet. And Renegades, they find their first round. So it's just been Ricky that has been sent towards this B-bomb site to try and investigate, see what he can do. The Sicko's aggression has been completely torn apart. Ali, he's aware to that. And that is a great start now for Order in this reply. Fantastic opening, that's for damn sure. You lose a round and you open up the next immediately. Sicko hasn't had a lot of success on those round peaks at all, has he? I mean, with the scout, sure, he got a couple of tags. But, whoa, that's not the nade, Ricky. Uh, with the scout, he got a couple of tags, but whenever he goes there with the op, it seems like he's just posting up a little bit too quickly to get those shots through. And then the one time he takes his time is when he gets punished, overstays his welcome. With Order now sat on the man advantage, they control the round. They decide where they want to go. And with the defense spread relatively thin, I mean, even the support play in towards the, the B side is quite passive because mid has to be held by ints. So they throw a flash to just get a peek out of hats. He doesn't see anybody below at the time. But in fact, the timing might be quite poor for them. At this point, I, I think they're starting to think that it's going to be an A hit, and that's just further accentuated by the fact that Ince is on his way towards that A site. As he rotates, Hatz sees them on top of the stairs. He's under pressure and has to burn up all of his utility to pull back. On the back of that, Ince rotates into this B site to provide support, but now the A hit comes through. Order are playing them like a violin, but hold on! Malta 
Rufus just doubled him. He's holding it all down by himself. Ooh. And with the damage done to Rike and Jira, they're now miles ahead in this fight. Renegades only need to hold off for 10 seconds. But that bomb is going down. Inns could not face again there too. He was taking down to 1 HP. He has win the duel against Jira. So this has given him a lot of hope in the round, but 12 HP for Rick. He's got a lot of work to do. He can take down Hats, who is just close in his face. He will try and play that, but he will not get the duel to go his way. Rick does fall. And I tell you what, though, there wasn't left... There wasn't any room left for error for Renegades. They had to make that work. In a great amount of work on one HP to find that frag and bring his team back into this. Just swing the numbers back in favor. But this in the end, I thought here... This was some great push and pull from Order until Malta entered. Mm -hmm. He yeah, made his mark in that round. The whole problem really was that Renegades had just gone for some short aggression as they heard the players barreling up the ramp. So there were two players on short. And at that late stage of the round, when you know you've dragged a rotate over towards the B site, you can never expect that second player to be there. The first peaks gets one kill, and then you're thinking, okay, all clear, all good to go. Malta just swings and double sprays down. Without his performance, plus he ended up lighting one of the other... I think it was Jira. He lit to like 20 HP. So with 280 damage done in that fight, that was massive. And without him in that position, they lose that round 100% of the time. Yep. And we're seeing another pause come out here too. I'm not too surprised to see that just yet. Because these teams are, are really in a battle right now. Not just for economy, but also... It's that time where they need to start tweaking the strategy a little bit too for order because last two rounds they have been shut down. I actually think it's, uh, you know, the, the opening strategy is not too bad. Maybe put a bit more pressure towards B because I feel as though Renegades at this stage, they're just leaving hats or ins on that bomb site to hold him by himself. They use a smoke, they use a flash to just buy some time if they're even going to hit that B bomb site. They haven't been successful there just yet. So that's maybe something order need to re at least revise going into some of these future rounds. You can't be so predictable and go A all the time. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, we saw Order attempt in a way where they sold that fake by going up top stairs and dragged the rotate from ins off the B site. Um, the only issue being that, obviously, for a lot of the round, they had the three-man stack on the ooh, three-man stack on the A site with ins playing from mid. And exactly as you said, you know, they were confident in just having hats there by himself. It was a flash in play for ins. You see, he's conserving his flash all the way through the round and, um, for that supportive play. And it is just a little bit too much space given over towards that site. Now, this time they're trying to challenge on middle, applying a bit more pressure there with Rick A sitting outside the B site, just playing that lurk, hoping they get a little bit aggressive. Although this far, I don't think we've seen Renegades really play in any way aggro on the B site. And in fact, the exact opposite, as we're saying, the super passive play by Hats. Every time they've tried to play aggro towards A ramp, Sicko has been leveled. So I don't think the aggro is working for it. I mean... Siko, Ali, two former teammates, and, you know, they both played a similar role in that they had the AWP for that, uh, those particular iterations of Order's roster. So, you know, I think they know each other quite well in the way that they play and the tendencies that uh, one would expect. But again, here we go. Time is on here for Order. They need to make this work in 14 seconds. Oh, this is a really hectic push, but Sicko up close with an op. He might be able to... Oh, he misses the shot. Ustilo has a chance now, but he can't get it planted. Nade comes through and the round's already over. Alistair has to run for his life. He takes oh. the fight with the op and dies after time. $50 left in the bank. That is heartbreaking for order. They left that one way too late to make the push happen. Yeah, that is heartbreak for order. Oh, no, that is not what you wanted to. And, he, you know, keep in mind that uh, that was on the back of a pause as well. So there was time to discuss what was going to be done in that round. It just took far too long to execute. They def left themselves with 15 seconds to get into the A bomb site. Very minimal utility, but also no real picks there to make it work. So you still just had to get in and hope you could bash the door down on the bomb site. And Ali here losing his orb after time, that really is just, yeah, that, that is a bitter pill to swallow because he's such a key player for them and not having the economy that his teammates do. That, uh, that is unfortunate. So we're just going to have uh, one of order retrying in the server. Nonetheless, that still gives them a lot of time to talk about how things are going to progress. So, I mean, Renegades have been able to claw their way back into this. It is a bit of a scratch match for them in some of these rounds, but they're holding well on this A bomb site. The passive hold has actually started to work a little bit more, and I think that's just because they're conserving more of their utility earlier on not necessarily sending Siko onto that A ramp and giving him up so early on in the round. 
keeping him alive longer in the round is bettering their chances and it has yielded them to results. Jim, I'm just taking a look at HLTV and I don't know, I, I, maybe production can... Uh, okay, so that that's team speak issues is, is what's causing that little delay with the players now. But um, if production can just check out for me the map picks, just double check because we had it up that Renegades had picked uh, Vertigo, but in actual fact, uh, HLTV is saying that Order picked it and Renegades chose Dust 2. And I can see Renegades picking Dust 2, absolutely. That was a map I imagined they would pick coming into this just because they've been so flawless on it. And I thought Order were playing a little bit, <laughs> a little bit reckless picking into that. So this was a, a real curiosity, but then I don't understand order. Like picking this map seems seems like madness to me. They lost versus downfall. Obviously, they think that that was a, a once off, but they've never really looked convincing here. That said, the last two times they've played Renegades, it's been a 16-14 loss and an overtime loss. So it has always been close between these two. I haven't. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen them as being convincing. <laughs> I actually had to laugh just then uh, at Alistair being known as Toasty McToaster. <laughs> in, oh, in the stats that was something new oh. so <laughs> highest in terms of uh fire damage and i mean he's got a few different known as aliases at the moment alistair toasty mctoaster i've even seen lewis as well so you know the man of many names will get himself at least some recognition and these are the maps on screen so we do have order picking into this Renegades Us too. Interesting uh interesting vetoes here, Mitch. Interesting vetoes. This series though, I mean, we expected fireworks and so far we're already getting a two and fro battle between the two teams here. We're back in server now. All players have joined and no real presence being shown towards B earlier on here. I mean we're gonna play on with four, so I don't know how this is going to pan out. At least on the... Uh, oh, there we go. It's actually updated now. They do have five in the server. There was just four showing on the overlay for a moment. Mm -hmm. That trickery. What sorcery is this? <laughs> you know, I was scratching my head there. I'm like, they're they're happy to start 4v5? What's yeah, going no on? One's, no one's <laughs> happy to start four. <laughs> a bit of an odd, odd show, and that would be. But, uh, yeah, Order not looking to throw away their 5-3 to three lead. They've got their full buy up here. Their money isn't fantastic coming into the next round, so this is a, a very essential round for them to show up, and certainly more so to the extent of the previous. That little bit of a break, the TeamSpeak issues, I'm sure they will. Whoever was left on TeamSpeak has been having a little bit of a chat. Nice shot by Sicko, and he gets around the corner in time as well. No trade possible. Great opening for Renegades, and that might be the first time we've seen Sicko convincingly find an opening towards a ramp and bail back. Key context here is that Order have already played a series, so they're warmed into things. Renegade, it can be a little bit cold to start, and that might actually hurt them against a team like Order. And as we've seen, they got off to a 5 0 start. They have been able to claw their way back in, but these rounds are just going to continue to continually be closely contested. As, uh, whoop. Good utility left on the uh, the T side. They've just got to fight their way in. <laughs> There's nothing really to work with. They've just got to fight, and they are losing that fight. Alistair. He is the last bastion of hope for order in this round, but he has got no time to work with and no health. Sicko puts the cherry on top. And Renegades are now back within striking distance. They have gone and got themselves four in a row. And it was order that was out to the early lead. So this is a real to and fro battle. Well, this has been a great start still, though, by Eustilo and Jira. The problem for me is that they found a lot of these rounds off crazy individual performances. I guess the same can be said by Renegades, but it just doesn't feel like it's to the same extent. Dexter uh, having his, his normal day really coming in, dominating. Malta's had some really important plays as well. And obviously Sicko in that round now starting to warm up with the off. Those are really concerning signs if I'm order at the moment. Five rounds is good, but it's not enough. You need a little bit more, especially considering they were 5-0 up. But look who's come in with another opening duel, Jim. It's Sicko, not punished this time either. It is just against the pistols, but hey, you'll, you'll take it. Any uh, any of those kind of opening frags on the aggressive positions are just going to feed confidence, and Sicko's going to start to feel even more comfortable in this skin. Yeah, they don't have the weaponry or the utility really to push him back on this round either. So this is him doing exactly what he wants to. And uh, you, <laughs> you make a funny point there. I mean, Dexter's just doing Dexter things. This is what we commonly see from him. 
in these rounds. For every other player in the server right now, it is Championship Sunday. For Dexter, it's it's Sunday. <laughs> it's just another day at the office. Here's a timeout coming through from Order, popping out there first. And I think it's at ample time. This is something that, yeah, Jim, we were talking about this throughout the entirety of the of the, um, of the group stages, but the, the rest of the playoff bracket, where we saw that these teams just were not calling pauses, even when they were in these really bad positions, where, like, you'd see a 7-8-0 or 7-8-1 and no pauses. They just keep on rolling, keep headbutting the same wall. And it was like, Maybe, maybe we should talk about it guys and even without a coach i feel like just taking a breather can be important sometimes absolutely but that being said though you're in a high pressure game things aren't quite going your way but you're still concentrating maximizing you know, every second that you've got so they, they could be potentially of tunnel vision in those moments it's good having that extra set of eyes i think it's just natural to have a, a team with a coach that will take the tactical pauses more often than not. So Renegades are utilizing that quite well. Look at this aggression from Ali. Sicko's all over it, though. He's not taking anything. And that is an early duel again now going the way of Sicko. Usually, what we'd seen early on in the piece was Sicko. He was the receiving end of those duels. But now that Ali's actually having to up the ante to take the fight to him, it's the advantage that is going to Sicko. As I said, right, you know, you're, you're letting him feel comfortable. He's hitting a couple of shots. He's getting that control. That's where it gets scary because you could see he was feeling a little bit pressured. He was taking shots where he would peek, and the second he saw a pixel of an enemy, he was trying to quick scope and run away. Now he's got that little bit of extra comfort and talking to comfort Dexter. Well, he's just sat down with his buddy here on short, a corpse of his enemy as he just falls on back, taking down his... No, he's not falling back. He's pushing forward, and even Valiance was caught off guard by that. Dexter is going high. He's going out again. Third time unlucky, though, as Dexter's shut down by Jira. Massive over-aggression by him, but hell, when you're feeling it, Jim, sometimes you gotta just go for it. Regardless, he's left him with a huge player advantage. Four versus two. And look at the HP on Rick. So this is really gonna be on the back of Jira. We said he was falling more into that fragging IGL category, and he's gonna be called upon to frag out for them in this round as they've got 23 seconds left to work with. Again, Burnt all of their utility, just this smoke here that's going to try and get them onto this bomb site. So, Jira needs to be careful. Rick's going to overwatch him a little bit, so they might be able to prevent the plant. Which they have not, so the time is going to run out here. There's a lot of work to do now for Jira. Left in a one versus three situation. He's going to try and sleuth his way through that smoke. Could not be done. And Renegades pick up a sixth round on the trot, and... This is starting to look dangerous here because you start letting Renegades put rounds on the board in consecutive order like this, things get scary. Just to confirm there, Jim, uh, it is actually order that picked this map. It, is, it just got confirmation from the admins mm -hmm. there, so the, the graphics were a little bit wrong on that one. Um, so yeah, order pick this. Renegades chose Dust 2. That makes a little bit more sense uh, when you look down at the Renegades side. Dust 2 definitely feels like a map where they're incredibly comfortable uh, historically. And then Vertigo, obviously. I, I, I don't know if it's... Um, I don't know if it's the best of picks by order just before the match, but it certainly seems to be playing out well in the early half. But now Renegades have got the ball rolling. We need to see order find a way back into this. They're again on their last legs economically. They've been getting picked constantly by Sicko and Dexter on this A ramp. And look at that damage with the nades. That is ridiculous. That'd be unlucky there not to actually pick up those frags. Those grenades are pretty damn good. Double grand. going on <laughs> you'll take it you'll take that kind of stuff i mean Al ali and valiance must be good at not uh, valiance is still you know viable in this round but with ali on 8 hp especially up this high a swift breeze could come by and just knock him over gotta be careful any dust particles in the air dust is next there you go <laughs> it could be could be spreading over to this one so at this point, 45 seconds. It's time to go again for order. The the clock has been their enemy in some rounds. But Dexter, this guy just won't stop pushing the nade. Finishes Val Valiance and Ali off. Ricky comes through with one on the Dexter. A good trade for this. The Molly's going to stop the plant. The spray from Malta is he is so close to connecting these. 
in 25 seconds. They've got time to outweigh the molly, but the smokes need to be still in play by the time that plant's coming in. That player can't retreat from the site, and the molly pushes him out in the open. Jira, good for one still, leaving it into a 2v3. A position for order that's winnable, and we need massive individual step-ups. Eustilo and Ricky have been players that have constantly delivered, and Renegades aren't even feeling pressured. They're going for a slow flank through short. They're not even going to try to push this bomb down. Instead, taking the fights and ints is good for the first. He's going to swing wide for the info and go. Oh, not oh. traded. Ricky's so good on that second Ooh. shot, but not good enough to take down Malta. That was a really good approach. I can't even fault the timing. Ricky was just so good to continue that spray into the head. Oh, that was almost superb. Almost superb. Tell you what, though. Look at this grin. One. The double grin. I don't know what happened there. Really didn't even do a lot of damage here, but look at that. Utility in that round is what won it ultimately for uh, for Renegades. They got themselves basically some squishy targets hitting this A bomb site, and despite the best efforts from Rick, they didn't pull that through. Oh, okay. That's a, he got a kill. He actually got a kill on that. Malta has just ran through middle, jumped through a smoke got a one for one trade it's still not a good position to be in but that's that's going to put a bit of pressure on order at this point because if you can't be safe hiding behind a smoke deep t side mid where are you safe there's really nowhere to hide really <laughs> nowhere to hide unfortunately but that being said though they've got to make this work here order's persistence with this a bomb site is it's got to yield results. I, uh, it's madness seeing them go for it time and time again. Obviously, having one less player here in Malta might make a difference, but Zico's just happy to stand in front of these smokes here. There's going to need to be a pop flash here. They're going to stop him. They're all waiting. He's good for one. Not the second, though. Valiance gets the trade, but he's quickly put to rest. And now Rick and Jira, they were happy for that fake to be sold, and they will go towards this B bomb site. And they will try their hand here at this three versus two. Oh, well, Ricky's not getting anything done. It has to be Jira. He's been huge so far in this map. 15 kills already. And they haven't found a round in seven. He wants to close this 1v3 out, but it definitely isn't the easiest round he's ever been faced with. And Dexter shuts him down to find it. What is it? This is an eighth consecutive round for Renegades, right? It was 5 0 for order. This is such a huge turn in the momentum of this game. Renegades really have warmed up into things. So, I mean, in terms of Renegades, you put that 5-0 start down maybe to just some cold comms. The fact that they haven't played a series leading into this order had. They played a, a closely contested series against Chiefs, and they actually looked better as that series went on. So I'm thinking order may have got themselves into some really good form here. But Renegades now are just starting to uh, go through that gear box that we know that they've got. It turns out they're actually now driving an 18 wheeler and have 18 different gears to cycle through so there's more gears than we actually know that uh, that they've shown so again we see another pause coming through time for these teams to talk it out order are yet to really find themselves any hope into these rounds the best they got there was that two versus three on the b bomb site after a fake after taking some heavy losses so it hasn't really been good news to write home about for Order since taking those initial five rounds. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely hasn't. In terms of the access they're getting at the moment, it feels just like they're not even being completely shut out either. It's the fact that they're getting in and getting palm plants and nothing in post plants is working for them. One or two rounds have been close and that is all they need. Just one or two to be picked up. We're getting towards the end of the half now and two is the most they can grab. They want eight to seven. They need it. At this point, a 5-0 to zero start, and your enemies potentially finish on double digits. That is not where you want to be. A very fast flank by Jira and Eustilo. They just completely opened up the site. That is one of the quickest rounds we've seen unfold. We've seen Moop do this just earlier on yesterday, but that pace was unbelievable. It's a 4v2. Everybody's low, but only one player on the retake has actually got an M4. Sicko getting back in there on an AWP isn't too likely to do a whole lot. All they did was change their focus. That's all Order did. Stop putting such huge precedents on taking the uh, the A ramp. And then essentially now, oh, geez, Ajira thought he was going to get peaked there. 
take it down. It's all on Malta. One versus two. This is so doable, but need to find that onto Eustillo. Could not be done. I don't know. I feel as though as soon as Eustillo crouches in a duel, it's over. He's won. <laughs> He's guaranteed the win every single time. I got to say, I, we mentioned Jira earlier, and he definitely did have some damn good games. But this has got to be the best form that he's been on. What is 17 kills? We're still not finished the first half. That's unbelievable. Oh, and today he's had his leap picks. What, what in the world are leap picks? The better version of weak picks. <laughs> oh, God. A little boost. A little cheeky boost. Get up nice and high. Dexter. Looking for the barrel. He might catch Valley himself once that smoke fades, but I don't know if they'll stick around that long. Oh, the smoke's already faded. There's the barrel. You see it. Oh, the crouch gave it away as well. He's just waiting for Valiants to make a move to step out a little bit wider. Hello and goodbye. Cheeky little peek. Ooh. Jira. He's made a real nuisance of himself. Again, they're putting a lot of precedence here onto A. You still are. He has been knocked in the forehead by a single bullet from Dexter. He will get that changed. And oh, what a way to finish that half. Such a convincing performance there. Look at that run of rounds from Renegades. That has been a dominant performance once they got themselves into the match. Order really didn't have any answers on that T side. 9-6 is, I mean, it feels very close, right? But what I want you to do at home is just have a little thought exercise and imagine what would happen if Renegades won that opening pistol round. And the rest of the half went the way it did. This would look a whole lot worse. I mean, Order getting off to a 5-0 start, they made it look dominant. But the way that they've fallen apart, the momentum is definitely not in their favor coming into the second half. It's really not looking good for them. They need to get themselves off to an ideal start on that CT side. So things will switch now. Let's just see what Order can produce on the CT side. It looks as though they did their homework in the early stages of the T side, but mm -hmm. that only went so well. As Renegades just put a stop to any momentum that they were getting. Early Smokes just masking vision onto this A-bomb site. The passive approach from Order means that they don't have any info. Did he just... No, no. I was going to say, he didn't just go in and fake the plant and fall back. The utility came through the molly over. And here's another just to block them off. This plant is just not being allowed. Renegades... Happy though to just wait this one out and look for the duels as the CTs push through. The flashes around. Valiant's though connecting both headshots. Bomb now dropped in the open. Sicko eventually delivering one, but it's taken way too long. All the fights go to order. And the second pistol round goes their way as well. Two great starts into the halves. No bomb planned as well, which is a really important thing. I don't know what on earth happened there. It just They just stopped before they got the plant. That really... Just held them up. I don't know what the call was there. Maybe they were expecting order to just rush them through the smoke. So they just you know, essentially started to, to fight then and there. But the bomb plant was strange for me. The fact that they just got themselves so far into the site and then decided to just hold off and wait. The fight yeah. never came. The fact that the two players that pushed had the bomb is just... It's really perplexing. I get it if you're pushing and planting at the same time, but... Otherwise, it just seems a, a little bit reckless and almost pointless. What are you going to do? Get the kill in CT and then rotate back or push the B site and plant and leave the rest of your team on A? I, I don't know. It seems a little bit odd. Maybe they were trying to get to the B site through... Well, I mean, that's where you're all, all your enemies are going to be at that point as well. So, yeah, it was odd. It was very odd. That round there was a, a quick blink and you'll miss it. And that's the way it should be, just up against clocks. Uh, as we said, when you don't get that bomb planted in round number one uh, as the T side and you lose, it is just a stomping ground on round two in order to let you have those AKs, which we're now seeing come into force. See if they can get some results. It's funny how uh, a good pistol round really does change things here. I mean, I feel as though you give you Stilo anything and he can really cause a ruckus. He's been one of those players that has just been on all week. And they're going to call on him time and time again here in this final. Obviously, you know, he's a player that has also worn the Renegades banner. So I'm sure he is looking to remind everybody in this region just how well he can play. Same with Rick as well. Obviously, same story there. Has previously worn the Renegades banner. 
before, but teaming up to take down an old foe. One minute on the clock. Renegades focusing up towards this A site. They still have players outside of B. So it, or going to middle, excuse me. So it, it's not like it's full commitment just yet. They're poking them out and burning up the rest of the utility that's in play for the CT side. The mid split underway. They've managed to get right up under Jira's nose. Jira, well, he started to smell them and <laughs> a quick double later. Oh. They have got that one on lockdown. The push, though, comes through. They thought it was going to be a B hit. Now they realize their mistake is both players fall. Renegades have completely baited them out on that one. The two players on mid selling exactly what they wanted them to. And now Order are left there wondering what they just bought. Having to get back into this site to get the return and bring it up nine to nine. Oh my, oh my, that really did just turn on its head that round. Here we go, Ricky and Jira. They're gonna try and get this done. Walter though, he goes down first. He's only on two HP, so this double peak coming out here. Oh, it's just left hats now. One versus one, he's so good in these rounds. Jira doesn't have the HP to play with. He's just gonna play with the time though. 13 seconds left, the time is ticking. He's just gonna try and bait him into another round. That's going to have to step here, but I don't think this is going to go. Nope, it's not going to go the way of order. And that is well played by round by Hats in that round. And, well, Renegades, they're looking strong. They finally wrestled back some momentum now in the second half. And the CT economy, it's not fantastic right now, Mitch. So this could be a round that uh, is going to stretch that lead for Renegades. Just when you think the round's over, Renegades explode into this next gear they once they decide where they're going they're there that was such a huge fake obviously the original intent of that round was to crunch in on the a site but as soon as jira killed them both and they were kind of aggressively hunting over mid they thought that okay this is it this is our opportunity because order wanted to go for the flanks they wanted to get the fast play up behind and i think it was malta who pushed up closest These easy kills ali Grabs a return on this round, starting it off on one for ones. Hats taken down by the spam. The smoke was dissipating. So that's one thing about this uh, this new system up the top. Like sometimes it says it's a through the smoke kill. I think it's like if the bullet hits a particle of smoke, it's through the smoke. But uh, in that instance, I think it's fair to say you could see him. Oh, oh you still are. Can he find another? He cannot. Dexter levels him. His pistols are doing work now for order. Still got some work to do though. That's Valiance. He's going to value his life right now. Wait for Ali to hopefully go back into it. Kiki peek there from Ali, but he is slammed down by Inns. Now it's all on Jira. That 5 7 on the flank should be spotted out here. Dexter. He's aware of that and far too good in the duel. Renegades now get themselves back out to that three round lead. And the buy is going to come in from order. So let's just see what they do. Obviously, they, we know that they've got players that can run a double up setup. They're only opting for the one at the moment. So Ali's just going to be a real linchpin for them. Hasn't had the start that he wanted. Look at the performances here. Jira is on 24. And he is by far the best performing player for order right now. So they need some other players in that capacity to step up. We know that they've got the firepower. We know that they've possessed that fragging power. But they're just not hitting their stride at the moment. Yeah, it's definitely been rough for Order. That aggression, though, that seems to have changed things over into their favor. A quick double opening as the B side is completely secure now. Renegades, they were not expecting that. They got caught off guard. Now they're just going to spread out, looking for some picks and some duels. They need to pull this one right back into their favor. And honestly, this one might just be a write-off from the get-go, Jim. It's not looking good. Not looking good. That being said, RNG. They have the ability to pull these rounds out of the fire, so don't write them off just yet. Doesn't look good. But here we go. Dexter's still up. It's almost immediate that cast is because he goes straight down. <laughs> As Sicko does make this a four versus two at least, so he's going to try his best to keep things interesting. That bomb is down. They do not have control of it, so they're going to have to send it hats back to collect it and in the meantime sicko poking prodding seeing what he can find but needs to be careful because he could leave hats in a one versus three oh. 
push up on B as the 1v3 comes through. Sicko's just being shut down. The bomb plant at least can be secured. Hats swings wide, sees it's all clear. And now at least they have to push into him. But the reality is Order should be able to lock this round down. They're stuck together. Look at that. It's a clump of CTs moving together in towards the CT spawn. Hats up close. He spotted out one and two. Oh. The third not connected. Ustilo comes through and snaps that round up with his lobster claws as Renegades failed to connect it. But it sure does come close considering how it started. That was way too close. Uh, Hats, great player. And had the potential to really just put that wall, ball back in the... Uh, Port of Renegades, but he couldn't do it. Couldn't do it against his former rosters. So that just makes things interesting now as we start to come towards the end of this match. So these gun rounds now are going to get more and more critical. That CT economy is going to be questioned here. Yes, they won the round, but they're thinning their coffers every time they come close like that here, Order. So they need to be careful. They get their money broken at this stage of the game. That could really hurt them because then their backs are really up against the wall. And that's not really what you want, considering the, the history there of the first half of oh, Great Nade, uh, where Ooh. we had, obviously, Order go 5-0 to zero and then finish on six rounds. We know that once Renegades warm up and get into it, you can just be in a lot of trouble. And considering they got two opening kills, more or less for free, with uh, the push by Ricky and Jira in the previous round, it still came down to a, a 1v1, essentially, a, possible, a very close 1v3. I think Order have to feel that, that little bit of pressure. This is dangerous. This is their map pick. Kira mollied out of this position. He's taken down, but it's still a 3v4. This should be a position that, with relative ease, Order can close out, considering they're still just up against pistols. Should be able to get this plant, though, so that's really good news for Renegade's economy. Wasn't looking too healthy, so the plant here will certainly bolster things, but... Oh, that is a wide peak from Malta. A high altitude duel. Paying dividends. Malta was even cheeky enough to try it again. So, three versus three. The flank here from Valiance is going to be key. Rick manages to pick up one. still out here. Has left Sicko now. One versus two. Thank goodness for that flank because that was of key importance. But again, taking really heavy losses here, the CT side. So, they're still in danger of having their money mess with. And as this... Game continues to go down to the wire. That could be really detrimental to order at the potentially the worst possible moment. You know, they got really lucky as well that Jira's weapon, I'm guessing, flew off the map. Because he was standing right at the edge and I saw someone run over his body and not retrieve it. So I, I think, honestly, had his rifle still have been there, they would have won that round. Because they mm. did it with the pistols. They're <laughs> very close to it. And here's where the scary times start to come up. Renegades 11 to 10. They're full by... Not in, it's not exactly a full force investment. Ince is down with just a Galil. And even after the success of the previous round. Argument there, potentially, if they didn't plant, that maybe it'd even be an eco. To be honest, I think they're at that stage, though. They recognize that the CT economy is not that healthy. So they're just going to continue to keep buying in. They know that a lot of these rounds previously have come down to very close situations. So they know the CT economy is not going to be super healthy. They've had to rebuy in a lot of these rounds. Yeah, no, 100%. And considering the fact that I I think arguably we haven't really seen a full buy from Renegades, the round that they did, they got completely blindsided by the push on ramp over towards B. I think this, being as we're a minute in and no one's dead, this will be the first uh, proper full buy from Renegades. And even then, it's lacking a lot of utility. Still got decent enough utility, though, to sell a fake if they do wish. That being said, is it's going to have to be really convincing too because they've got players that are playing forward from these smoke positions here. So you still are. He's going to get up close and personal with that MP9. Although it's Hats that's doing all the greeting. He says hello to the A bomb side here. And now they're being pushed out. Order. They have lost control. And Renegades are getting in and making this force buy work. And well, this peak from Ali is going to be key, but he is sat down by Sicko. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ricky and Jira. I feel like I've said this combo of names so many times. All they can do is save right now. There is no hope of them taking this round whatsoever. Renegades. They might be down, but they're never out. And that is one less gun in the economy too. That is sad. 
because that was the only rifle. Rick's MP9. He might be able to steal a one versus one here. But look at this grouping from Renegades. They're so well timed and close together. Rick's going to be in some trouble here at the moment. An MP9 does not survive. Mm. Renegades. This is what I feared. Look at this economy in the CT side. They are in all sorts. Yeah, not saving over those weapons has essentially left them in a position where they're Leia without any Obi-Wan. They haven't got any hope. And considering the 12 to 10 the scoreline, you know, this is a pretty grim position to be in. It's a, the Death Star is aimed at their home planet, but they're on it this time. And they've even infested up. Oh, this is so risky, Jim. If this round doesn't go their way, it's 14-10. This is crazy. It's funny you mentioned Star Wars, because right now, they're the ones using the Force. <laughs> that, is, that is a very good point. They're not the first order I've ever seen, but this lineup certainly has looked better <laughs> than some of the others. The thing is, they need to step it up if they want to be overthrowing Renegades. And at the moment, that ain't looking all too likely. It's down to a 2v4. And, and Eco faces them in the next round. I really doubt that they force by up in that one. And so 14 to 10 is more or less where we're going. I think unless the Jedi can strike back, this would be a very rough ride now for Order. Rick, again, under some pressure here. He's really, he's had a tough time. They pressured him at bank, or he's been forced to retake A. That's how things have panned out for him. And right now, I mean, Renegades aren't too concerned with hunting him. It's only a deagle they're taking out of the economy. There's no need to lose anything themselves. I mean, their money's not 100% short up either. So you're not going to find them chasing for any particular frags here. But this is not looking great for order. They're still going to have some gun rounds, though, to play with. But as that time ticks on, less and less likely that they will have many gun rounds to play with. Yeah, unfortunately, that force just didn't awaken. And, and even with Rick A, you know, out there looking, lurking around these different angles, he's trying to be a phantom, trying to be a menace, but unfortunately, he's not delivering anything today. And saving over a deagle, it's irrelevant. Only the armor is, is what I suppose will help a little bit. As we yeah, said... Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the rogue one? <laughs> I was... I Actually, I, I wasn't... I wasn't even thinking of who's, that one. It who's going to go it. solo? Oh, God. Yeah. I, 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 this feels really bad. A round like this, where you force buy it, you lose a, a rifle round, you force buy it, and then you're put on an eco. That eco basically feels like you've fallen down, and now they're just stamping your head in the mud, just dragging you through it face first. You know, Renegades hitting 14 to 10 will be a spot where I think Order will realize that they had this one just firmly within their grasp. They completely let go. Yeah, Renegades are just quite comfortable at the moment. I mean, if you had to character type Renegades, are that guy in the club that just slaps you on your ass and tells you what to do. That's what they are in this region at the moment. Does that happen to you a lot, Jim? <laughs> I'll comply it. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to uh, for lockdown to be released. We go to the club. Who's really the one that's locked down? Oh God! I mean, that's up to you. Um, when we're <laughs> when we're looking at the spot now for order, I think uh, it, I mean maybe if it was Ricky left alive, you'd save because he'd have the piece of armor at least. But with no Kevlar. You don't have to worry about the T-side economy at the moment. Go, oh, well, don't give them the kill for the money. No, you, you want to find an exit. And that's why Valiance is lurking around so aggressively. The likelihood is you won't find anything. This has to be a very quick shot. It's even trying to be spammed down through the elevators and Sicko holding wide with the op. That was a really passive lockdown by Renegades. They didn't want to give any room over to him in that 1BX. And so 14 to 10. Look at Renegades' economy. It's... Okay, yeah, obviously they're able to buy. They just won the round, four players alive, it's all good. But the thing is, they're not going to be losing this round and ecoing. They're probably not going to lose this and one more and eco. They've probably got three back-to-back -back buys, especially with bomb plants. And that is a massive problem for Order, who struggled to even deal with two buy rounds in a row. 
let alone three. That is a real struggle for them. That is, I mean, we always knew that Renegades were going to be really strong, but it was order that needed to perform on all cylinders. They need to fire on all cylinders if they wanted to really push Renegades. We know that they've got individual talent. We know that the players in order can stand up and perform on their given day. It just today had to be all of their given days. So right now, obviously, this is the first map in this uh, best of three. So, I mean, I'm not writing off order just yet, but when we head on to Dust 2, they're going to need to step up. They're going to need to step up. They've still got some time to work with here. So this buy round here really, for me, is that right one last roll of the dice. As I said, once they lost that uh, economy control, they didn't give themselves a lot of gun rounds to play with. So they need to be clean from here on out. That is a great grenade, though. They have booked Jira, his positioning. And this forward approach now from Order. I mean, Renegades really, I feel like they've got the read on it. Well, Order better hope not. At the man disadvantage, they need to pull these kills back right away. No op to quickly get them the kills. The flash that came over, not converted on. Ali's playing a very, very passive role. Short's being covered by his teammate now, but they've just lost B. Ince walked up behind, took Ricky out. And with the three-man stack towards that A site in a four versus five, Ricky have to do it all by himself. You can't even put a lot of pressure on him. Like, the responsibility really isn't his. The fact that they lost Jira so early on, it did just leave him isolated on an island by himself. And unfortunately, he didn't have the survival gear there to fend off five terrorists. Not typically what you choose to bring to a, a desert island. It's not in my top five, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, this line actually. Good for one. They're going to need to be very aware of what Malta is doing. Oh, they're holding strong actually, Order. They're still managing to make this work, so... Unless Ali falls down to a very... Oh, Inns has a great shot onto Valiance, but... They hold on to at least two of those weapons, so good job from Renegades to take one gun out of the economy there. So if they're forced to retake in any of these situations and they don't have any utility, you know why. They've been forced to rebuy into this. So this is rough for order. Their backs truly are up against the last wall right now. And Renegades could be taking this first map in the best of three and, of course, getting themselves closer in those RMR rankings, taking that major spot. That's what they want. That's what they're here for. They don't mess about too when they're goal-oriented and they've got that goal in mind. They really do try and force the issue here. So this is Renegade's game to lose right now. 100%. They're on the T side. They get to dictate the pace and where they take it. The smoke's on top of ramp to start this one out. They've just crept all the way up. Giving Valiance an opportunity, but taking him down right away. The double swing over on the ramp is Stilo. Good to shut that down. Dexter and Hat's already gone. And with that, the bomb. It's dropped in the open. It's mollied now as well. They can't retrieve it. Which means the CTs are going to be fully rotated by the time they get in gear to actually push this. A really late flank attempt as well is coming through from Ince. He has just made it up through mid. He went to up the ladder. But at this point, it's been a good... A good while since they've uh, really gone for anything. So he just pulls back. He realizes they're going to be watching their flank. And so there's no point in him really uh, committing to that kind of a strategy. 44 seconds. If they can just pick up that bomb, they can get back. And it looks like the Order have completely conceded control. They've even rotated one over to hold towards the B site. That could lend itself to an early flank. But not holding on to that bomb... Could have been a mistake. The Molly in play as well. Ticking Ali away. He can't really fall back as much as he wanted to safely. And Jira and Yustilo almost fall on the retreat. This is a, a pretty rough position actually for Order. Because they're gambling on this flank working out. But Ricky's being watched. He's being watched. And they've got to go for it now. They're, they're committed. They've got their player in the flank here. But they're also low HP on the site here. So, I mean, one good duel here from Inns. This could be the end of things for Order. They do manage to get the trade. Sicko, though, he's keeping it alive. And Sicko now just has Jira to contend with as Malta is also up. They put the final touches on 16-10. Renegades, a strong first map in this best of three. Order, they had the start.